I get asked just about every day if I have any samples of what the videos look like within my Holly EFI training course, Tune the Trilogy. This video is part of the troubleshooting section where this will kind of get updated as things like this pop up. But I felt like this is a common one and uh, it's no secret that Holly has O2 sensor issues. So I figured this would help a lot of people out and give you the opportunity to take a look inside the course and to kind of get a feel for what it's like. So check it out and let me know if you have any further questions. I recently had a car come in that needed some diagnostic work to figure out why it was running bad all of a sudden. It was running a Holly HP ECU and uh, what I found was a little bit interesting. I thought it might be something that you guys would like to see. So I'm going to walk you through what I saw, what the problems were, how I went about troubleshooting it, how I fixed it, and kind of what the results were. So it doesn't matter if you have a $150,000 brand new Mercedes or a piece of junk AM wideband. If you're using anything that has an oxygen sensor, at some point in time you're going to experience that sensor going bad and depending on how some things are set up and what it's being used for uh, you can get yourself into a situation where the car starts running really bad and you might want to figure out why obviously so now the o2 sensors do tend to fail differently again depending on kind of what it is and uh, it, it's not always the same but holly specifically usually when the sensor goes bad it will just peg itself all the way lean and it's really easy to diagnose because you know the car's not running at 35 to 1 air fuel ratio or whatever so you just know the sensor's bad you fix it and you're on your way. With other gauges like the earlier AM style, uh, those would actually freeze and lock themselves at 14.7. So obviously at that point you would know your air fuel usually bounces around a little bit. So when you see it locked at 14.7, uh, you know it's time to replace the sensor. Uh, but what was different about this particular O2 sensor failure is that it appeared to be running correctly for the most part. And I actually had to go through the whole like kind of process to pinpoint and you know make sure specifically that it was the sensor. Uh, the O2 sensors are a little bit more expensive for the HPs and Dominators, especially if you go the NTK route. So before I told the customer he needed to spend a bunch of money, I wanted to just absolutely verify that that was in fact the problem. So let's take a look at some data logs and some dyno graphs and you can see what I'm talking about. Now what did actually make troubleshooting this one a little bit easier is that I have had it on my dyno before and the first thing that I did is I pulled up the old dyno graph and you can see here it's making, you know, roughly 600 horsepower, somewhere around there. And uh, then we loaded the car up on the dyno and uh, started just making a run as is, no changes. Now this is also something that they were trying to troubleshoot themselves. I mean, they went as far as putting a fuel pump on it and uh, they could tell that they had a fueling related issue, but again, they thought it was an actual fuel delivery problem. So we made our first run on the dyno. I didn't really rev it very high either. Uh, just as you can see here that our closed loop compensation is at 20%. Uh, there's a little bit of learn going on too. And you can see our target and our air fuel ratio are drastically different. And this is dangerously lean according to our actual air fuel reading. And if we toggle the closed loop compensation on and off, not only is it high, but it's just pegged at 20. So if the limits were higher than this, it would have just continued going. Because at this point right here, it's already adding 22%. And it looks like we have probably somewhere around a 20% difference still. So at that point, if you would have allowed it to, it would have been adding you know every bit of 40%. Here in the red is our actual first run. Uh, one, I could see that it was dangerously lean. And two, I could see that it was down on power. Power. One of my favorite parts about this mainline dyno is actually being able to watch the runs progress real time. So you can tell when something's down on power, you don't need to continue revving it all the way out and have the potential of hurting it even more. On other dynos, you basically have to complete a full run before you can evaluate any of the data. So it's a really nice feature, uh, but you can see here we're down a whole bunch of power. Now again, I've been doing tuning on this vehicle previously. I knew that our closed loop correction and stuff is nowhere remotely close. Like there's no way I'd leave, let a car leave here like this. So I knew something was wrong, but the first step is almost listening to what the ECU is telling you to do, trying to correct it, and then seeing what the outcome is from there. I had my suspicions on what was actually going on here. Uh, so the next thing that I did was monitored fuel pressure and gave it some fuel just to see if it would correct it or, or what the outcome was gonna be. So let's take a look at what happened when we did that. Now you can see here looking at the yellow that it just really pissed the car off giving it more fuel. And I don't remember exactly how much I went. It wasn't anything crazy. I wanna say it was like 15% and it was just that much further away because the ECU is already adding 22%, I think it was. And now we're adding another 15, 20%. So this thing is just pig rich. And this run was so bad and so blatantly obvious that something was wrong. I actually didn't even bother saving the data log. And the other thing that I did at this point is I backed some fuel back out of it and I 
I turned closed loop and learn and everything off. So we're just kind of like full manual mode at this point. So now if we look at our log, the solid line is the first run we were looking at. And now we have a comparison log open, which is the dotted line. Uh, if you look down here at the purple, which is our fuel flow, uh, you can see that I've pulled some fuel out of it. You can see that our closed loop and our learn are off. So at this particular point previously, the ECU was adding 27% of fuel. And now we are adding 0% of fuel because all of that stuff is turned off. So now looking at our green line, I didn't make a full run as I could see that we went in the right direction by turning closed loop in the learn off and now we're tracking our previous run almost exactly. So at this point, I basically confirmed that it is the O2 sensor that is the problem. But again, before I go spending somebody else's money, I'm gonna try and verify that in as many different ways as I can as possible. So for the next run, I actually hooked up the Dino's wideband O2 sensor, just so we could compare what the Dino's O2 is reading versus what the ECU's O2 is reading. Now with all of the previous runs up to this point, you can see we just have a flat line on the air fuel ratio. That's just because there's nothing hooked up. It's not turned on, it's just inactive. Uh, but now here with this white line, is with the O2 sensor hooked up in reading and you can see with all the extra fuel that we've put into it it's reading that it's into the tens even though our wideband within the ECU is telling us that it's into the 13s the other thing that's interesting is the O2 sensor in Holly was reading perfectly fine during startup cruising idle all of that it just was pegging itself at basically 13.5 during full throttle operation so I've actually never seen one fail this way with Holly all right so now at this point we have triple verified that our O2 sensor is actually bad and it was using a Bosch O2 sensor and conveniently enough I had an NTK sensor here so we switched over from the Bosch to the NTK uh, basically tried to put the fueling back uh, to where it was before I started fooling with things and throughout this whole process knowing we were dealing with a potentially kind of lean condition I pulled a little bit of timing out of it to get started but here is our run with our fueling back to the way that it was and with the new oxygen sensor so if we click through here on the log you can see our target air fuel ratio and our actual air fuel ratio and at this point, I still have closed loop and learn turned off as anytime I'm troubleshooting anything, my absolute step one is to turn off closed loop and learn. And you can see we're within a point, basically. Everything looks good there. And if we look at the actual dynograph, you can see here looking at the purple that our air fuel is much leaner than it was before and it matches our Holly O2 sensor almost perfectly and on this particular run since I was trying to watch 40 different things all at the same time I just made like a half run as you can see here and it looks much happier all the way around so at this point we've confirmed that our O2 sensor was bad we have repaired it and now we have verified that it has fixed the problem so I think I made one more run where we put the timing back where it was supposed to be and let's look at that real quick now the other thing that we did do on this run is I I have the closed loop turned back on and it appears I left the learn off. I typically do that when I'm while I'm tuning. And if we click through, you can see our closed loop percentage is about as dead nuts as you can get, really. Uh, looks like we might have a little bit of additional Excel enrichment in it than we need, but it runs perfectly fine, so I'm not too worried about that. And if we look at our dyno chart, you can see here that the purple is up everywhere. I didn't pull out a whole lot of timing. I don't remember, probably a couple degrees. And you can see our air fuel is tracking spot on, and it's really, really close to what our Holly O2 sensor is reading. Now here's the big takeaway from this video. By watching what the O2 sensor was telling us needed to happen and continuously trying to listen to it and add fuel, uh, you can see here that this would have progressively gotten worse because we would have kept adding fuel and it, it never would have gotten any better it would have just continued getting worse but basically after making one or two rounds of revisions of adding fuel trying to fix the quote-unquote lean condition you can see here that we were down roughly 200 horsepower and the car was actually pulling through this just fine it wasn't you know hiccuping and burping and farting and, and acting pissed off it was just a, a big fat turd so learning how and when to ignore your oxygen sensors is a really valuable skill and generally speaking if it's telling you that it wants fuel and you give it fuel and it tells you that it wants more fuel and you give it more fuel and you just keep going through that process and it never gets better my go-to is usually to turn closed loop off start going the opposite direction and see if things get any better uh, now you want to go slow in the situation because you if it is actually lean you don't want to go too lean but when you're dealing with a 200 horsepower difference like this you should be able to tell the difference pretty quickly that's going to do it for me today hopefully you guys learned something and if you would like to learn more make sure you check out one of these videos on the screen right now